Guys, I had a bit of a revelation when I woke up this morning. Um, I don't know why I thought of this, but um, I realized that I have not done a proper, like, first ride and impression on the Hentai Hornet, a.k.a. the Handsome Hornet, um, which I thought was kind of crazy. I've ridden the bike around a little bit. I've not really spent a lot of time with it and riding it, and it's just so cool, and I wanted to ride it today. Um, there's a lot I wanted to talk about today, actually. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about what makes this motorcycle really good, in my opinion, um, what makes bikes like this really good. I also wanted to touch upon the relatability of motorcycles like this. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the YouTube space of relatability and what that kind of means for creators and those sorts of things, and uh, kind of just pontificate on those topics. Um, there's not really a sponsor supporter of today's video, but as always, you can always support us by heading over to yamanoob.co and becoming a member and joining our Discord server. Uh, I think it's a great thing to do. And um, if you own a bike like this and uh, you need some help fixing it up or doing stuff to it, uh, you can always jump on the Discord server and we have a lot of people who are very, very helpful. Um, I was actually helping a guy diagnose a uh, front brake lever pulse that he was feeling. Uh, me and another guy were chatting with him on the server and uh, we were trying to figure out if maybe like he had a loose rotor bolt or maybe if his rotor was bent or whatever's going on. So uh, if nothing else, you can get feedback from your sweet Papa Yam. So uh, yeah, guys, let's jump aboard the Honda Hornet and let's talk and let's just let's just do like a classic old school vlog, shall we? Gosh, it's been a minute, huh? Best part about this bike. You ready? You guys ready? Ooh, nice. Gear driven. Delicious. The wine. Oh, it's a good engine, guys. It's a good little bike. Little bike. It's got a freaking 919cc inline four. I feel like every time we say something's like a good little bike, we don't actually mean it's little. But then our international audience just like their their brains explode and they're like, I'm on a 125. That's a huge bike. I hate my life on a 125. We got so many 125 boys in the chat down below. It's kind of funny. So. Honda Hornet. Man, what is there to say about this motorcycle? It's actually kind of interesting that I have not really spent a lot of time with this thing. Even back when I bought it as a giveaway bike in like 2018, I've never really had the chance to spend considerable seat time on the old Honda Hornet. Um, it's always been a case of like other bikes got in the way or just wasn't working very well at the time. Um, and uh, it's never really been you know, a bike that I've been able to spend a lot of time with, you know? I do want to get some mirrors put back on this thing since it is a proper street bike. We need to spoon back on those mirrors over here and over here. That would be nice. It's kind of annoying having to look over my shoulder every time I want to ride this thing. Um, the biggest quirk about this bike is this tiny handlebar that it has. Um, this is actually the OE handlebar from the Honda Hornet. So many of the parts we put on here were like factory OE parts and they weren't, uh, you know, anything that was aftermarket because we wanted the bike to be as as stock as possible and kind of this restoration project on it which i think came out really sweet um i really love the kind of classic feel that this bike has it doesn't feel like a new bike at all it doesn't feel like a new an old bike trying to be a new bike um i really really like that about it and this engine makes a great sound and a great amount of power very nice really usable street engine too um and I, I think it's just a package that really really works now the big topic for today's video that i wanted to talk about was relatability right and for me relatability is an interesting thing right because when you start out a youtube channel and you start posting content you are no different than anyone else who is consuming the content right you have uh you know an equal playing field with the people who are watching the content supposedly right people all start in different places in life right like there's obviously different levels of privilege and you know if you grew up in an affluent household and you got to ride you know dirt bikes and pit bikes when you were a kid and then you know you grew up riding motorcycles and then i don't know you you hit it big and then you've got yourself three or four different motorcycles maybe you're not as relatable but on the whole there's an element of you know, people watch content that they see themselves in. I think that's a big reason why our stuff does pretty well is that we, we keep it real here, you know? 
Uh, I see a lot of YouTube channels, you know, for better or for worse, a lot of it is just what I call flex content, which is people, you know, buying big fancy Ducatis and super bikes and, you know, getting them all carbon and everything else. And there's nothing wrong with that. I find that content to personally be quite vapid. Um, I think there's way more interesting ways to consume that kind of content. Let's see if we can lane split here a little bit, trying to get up to the front of this line. Uh, skinny little handlebars on this thing definitely make it a breeze. Got these trucks with these big old uh, giant mirrors and stuff. There we go. Now, I will say lane splitting is technically not exactly legal here in, in Texas, but I don't really care, um, especially at a red light like that. Nobody's moving anyway, so I'm going to just go ahead and shuffle on in front of the line. It's also safer for me. I'm not trying to get rear-ended. But anyways, yeah, so a lot of that content I find a little bit vapid. I find it a little not that interesting to just be like, hey, I got this all-carbon BMW. I'm like, cool. I don't really care. But I think that the content that resonates best with people is the content that is highly relatable. Um, we've seen such great responses on videos where we feature the sort of bikes of the people, you know, like the Honda Rebel video we did, the Versa 650 video we did, um, the, uh, the Honda Hornet build here too. I think a lot of people like that content because it kind of makes them feel like they're kind of part of the universe. Like they could see themselves getting some crusty Honda Hornet like this and kind of fixing it up and making it new, which is kind of funny because this actually cost me a lot of money to get to this point. <laughs> I dropped almost a thousand dollars on this gas tank, you know, but maybe it's aspirational in that sense too, right? I don't know. Um, God, I just realized why I don't come out and vlog at eight in the morning anymore um, because traffic is just abysmal at this time of day. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Trying to get on a road that's a little more fun. And the other thing I want to say too is I really want to lean into, um, you know, riding motorcycles that people consider these kind of cult classics and, and really enjoy, you know, um, these motorcycles that people kind of, kind of flock to from th throughout the years, you know, stuff like the Honda F4i, the FZ6, the Bandits, you know, the, the kind of motorcycles that, you know, a lot of people get as their first or second motorcycle just because they're really cheap and they want something that's still pretty good. And what's crazy is a lot of those bikes are still really, really, really good. Like, I'm riding around this Honda Hornet, and I'm like, this is a great motorcycle. There's just a couple things I would tweak on it if it was, like, from bone stock like it is now. Like, I'd love a wider handlebar. That'd be, like, the first thing I would do to it. Um, but beyond that, it's great. You just set the suspension, take care of it, and it's good to go. I mean, this sucker has like 60,000 miles on it, and it's completely fine, <laughs> which is such a testament to the build quality of these kind of older Japanese machines. A lot of 90s and early 2000s inline four bikes like this, um, man, you can buy them, and as long as the owner was halfway decent at taking care of it, it will probably work just fine, which is really cool. That's such a testament to the build quality of these motorcycles. And I think when we feature bikes like this and we kind of show people, you know, the more uh, relatable bikes, the more interesting bikes that they are, could see themselves buying, um, I think that makes the content better. I think it's really important to always bring it back down to earth. It's really important to always have content that people feel like they're connected with and make it relatable, which is why we do the sweepstakes the way we do, where it's like we have beginner bikes, intermediate bikes, classic bikes, and expert bikes, so that there's something for everybody. Um, that's been my big mission with the channel the last, I'd say, four or five years, is uh, making sure that there's something for everybody. I want to make sure that uh, if you tune in to Yami Noob, if you decide to spend your time here, which is really cool, and I think you should, um, you know, I want to make sure that there's always going to be content here for you. Alright folks, getting back into the kind of first ride on the Hornet here. This is a really sweet little bike. Um, I'm actually surprised at the suspension on this thing. Uh, it is actually a little stiffer and a little more sport bike than I anticipated. Uh, you guys will see this Friday we've got a new... Uh, a new giveaway bike that's launching that's very similar to the Hornet, and uh, I can't just reveal it yet, but um, 
that bike actually feels a lot softer than the Hornet. The Hornet actually feels a little more hard-nosed, which makes sense. This bike is based on a super bike, technically. It's got the, uh, what is it, the 900 double R frame with the 929? I don't remember, one of those. One of those sport bike frames, proper aluminum twin spar frame. Yeah, running it through these nice little sweepers here. Beautiful morning here in Austin, Texas. Nice and green now, finally, with summer being in full swing. This is a very enjoyable bike to do this kind of thing on, you know? Very enjoyable bike to bop around your local twisty roads, take a nice long trip to the canyons or something like that. Very comfortable for an all-day ride. Not vibrational at all. A teensy bit buzzy through that four-cylinder, but this one has a lot of miles on it, so I'll definitely forgive it. I bet a brand new Honda Hornet uh, would not feel this way. It just feels a little bit buzzy, um, but you know, multi-cylinder engines like this, a nice big four-cylinder, are, are very, very non-vibrational compared to like a big single cylinder or something like that. So this is uh, a bike that still feels pretty damn good, I gotta say. I love how analog it all feels too, you know? Like I'm looking down, I'm seeing the two needles sweeping by. The needles are moving ever so slightly, which I, I love seeing that. I love when the needles just like vibrate a little bit near the uh, speed or RPM that they're at. And uh, cable actuated throttle. I mean, it's a what you see is what you get kind of motorcycle. And I really love it for that, you know? And that's why I think a lot of people still love those cult classes. Like I was talking about, like the FZ6s and the F4Is. Um, they're still really good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this bike, man. Um, bikes have just gotten, you know, a little more technologically developed and a little bit smoother and a little bit faster. But the formula's been here for like... 25 years honestly um they i mean yeah like your new mt07s are cool and there's a lot of stuff man this guy's just walking straight up in the middle of the road that is crazy um you know mt07s mt09s duke 890s street triples or the, the middleweight middleweight quote unquote uh sport bike category now is dense and replete with options but Honestly, if you go back in the catalog, these bikes are still just as good. Um, especially for the average, like, street warrior, you know? I think a lot of guys vastly overestimate what they need. It reminds me of people who, they'll buy, like, a fully kitted out, you know, truck with a skid plate and a lift and all this crazy stuff on it. Only to realize that, uh, you know, the trails that they're going on, you could probably go down with, like, a crossover. You don't really need something so uh, intense to to go over the, the normal stuff you're doing and i feel like the the middleweight naked category is a lot like that too right now i don't really think the average street rider is going to do anything with the street triple that they couldn't do with a hornet or an fc6 or whatever it is um like yeah it's cooler to own and yeah it's a little nicer to own but like there's so much more performance in those bikes that most people have no idea what to do with honestly uh you don't really get the chance to exploit it gosh i will say having put brand new tires on this thing it feels night and day where it was before on those smoked angel gts that were on it this thing feels awesome it feels really really planted really smooth really nice check it into the line and it just sits there really really predictable um yeah honda makes a great bike I'm really glad we have this thing back in the shop, man. It feels like such a cool full circle thing for me to have this motorcycle again. Um, but I, I think, uh, you know, I think despite it being a cool motorcycle that I love having in the shop, um, it still feels like a giveaway bike to me. It doesn't feel like my own motorcycle. And I really think there's going to come a day where I give it away again, to be honest. <laughs> Um, I could definitely see that. It's such a nice, beefy amount of torque in the middle. It's funny because this bike is considered, like, kind of fast by normal motorcycle standards nowadays. They're like, oh, yeah, it's, like, pretty quick. Uh, man, you'll still double the speed limit with this thing so easily. <laughs> well, guys, as I am now in a school zone, and I think I've said all I needed to say, uh, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you checking out the channel. And if you've stuck around all the way to the end here, boy, I really appreciate you. Um... Not sure why you would. Uh, <laughs> there's, 
I don't, I don't know. Some of these, uh, that's why I don't do these kind of like vlogs anymore because they, I feel like they end up so rambly. Um, but you know, every once in a while, I think people do enjoy it and they want to hear it, so we'll try to put it together. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Remember, you can head over to gamingnew.co, join our Discord server, which is a great thing to do if you want to be a bigger part of the community, which I highly recommend. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Well, look at you. You've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know. Maybe leave me a comment down below about how much you hated it as well, too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. Keep watching Yammy Noob.